Not long ago, I did a short in which I froze a golf ball in liquid nitrogen and saw what that did to it. Today, I want to expound on that experiment by testing a variety of qualities of golf ball to see what happens to them as they undergo extreme temperature changes. This right here is the kind of golf ball that I did the short with. This is the cheapest, this is the cheapest golf ball I could find. It was like eight bucks for a 12 pack at Walmart. Let's recreate what I did in the short and see if it happens again. Cheap golf ball, liquid nitrogen. And one very cold, golf ball. For the most part, other than the layer of vapor forming off of it, it looks pretty much the same. And, well, it sounds a little different. Let's see if it bounces differently than an unfrozen ball. Ooh, maybe a little less of a bounce, if anything. Next, I tried hitting the ball with a hammer. Well, we did have what I would call a catastrophic failure. Pieces shot off all over the place. We didn't get the same result as last time. I don't know that much about golf, but I was told by the man at the golf store that this is a pretty good medium in between the top and the bottom. And he said that this is a top tier ball. This is the kind of thing pros will use on a professional competition thing. Tour. tour. My cameraman says the word is tour. Frozen, this is the middle grade ball. We're gonna do the bounce test again. Looking pretty similar. Sounding very different. Hmm. All right, and our top of the line pro ball. Ooh, that's a very metallic sound. Okay. Pretty similar. Again, the noise is the biggest difference, I think. Here you go. Now for the hammer test. How are they gonna hold up? One. And our pro level ball. What's it gonna do? It's certainly damaged, but it didn't lose any big chunks. It's just got a couple of extra large dimples in it, really. Now I may have inadvertently pointed out that I'm not much of a sportsman, but a lot of you are, and you know, when you're out there doing sport things, it's good to stay hydrated. Something that can really help you out with that is this water bottle made by Circle, the sponsor for today's video. Something that's pretty cool about this, you see the liquid around in there? There's nothing special about it. That's just normal, unflavored water. It comes out flavored. One of Circle's main goals is to help people drink more water. So if you have a problem staying hydrated, getting to flavor that water to your preference every time, that's probably gonna help you drink more, right? Each sip cartridge can flavor the equivalent of six 20 ounce fully flavored bottled beverages. That's as low as 50 cents per 20 ounce bottle. The more you buy, the more you save. So if you're trying to find a way to hydrate better, that's a great place to start. And with over a hundred flavors, they've got fruity stuff, they've got coffees and teas, you're sure to find something that you like a lot. And like I said, you've got full control over how much. You want plain water, no flavoring? Turn the dial one way. You want to kick a flavor? Turn it all the way to the other side. That easy. Not only does it make hydration easier, but it also saves plastic. With the one cartridge, you're saving 84% plastic use over buying six 20 ounce bottles of whatever flavored water you're drinking. And of course, one of the best perks of Circle's flavors is they have no sugar. Mm, I think I'm gonna go with white cherry next. Ooh, that's really good. Use the link down in the description or the QR code that's on the screen right now to save up to 35% off of your first purchase. So we've seen what happens if we freeze the golf balls and at least with the cheap ones, I don't get as much bounce. I just wanna see what happens with the reverse. What happens if they're hot? So I'm going to boil one of each of these golf balls and see what kind of bounce results I get. Well, I had a cheap ball break perfectly in half when I did this the first time for the short, but I do wanna see what's inside all of them. So I'm going to see if it's possible to use this pipe cutter and cut open a golf ball. There's the inside of our cheap golf ball. That cut fairly easily. Conceptually, we're definitely seeing the same thing here. We've got an outside jacket and we've got an inside core. This is the middle range. All right, we've got, it looks like maybe one additional layer going on here. In between the outer white plastic and the colored center, we have this clear layer and it does seem like the outer white plastic is thinner compared to the other two. 
Okay, I think our golf balls are good and boiled. Hot, but this plastic is not terribly conductive, so as long as they don't keep holding in the same place for too long, really not much of a problem. Bounce test. We've got the same type. These are both the cheap ones. Well, it still seems like the, uh, the hot golf ball is not bouncing as well as the room temperature ball. Let's try a different grade. Mid versus mid. To me, it looks like they're almost identical. So I think it is bouncing less, but I think the amount less is less than with the cheap ball. It's interesting that the surface feels grippier. High quality golf ball. Bounce test, here we go. It's lower. This is actually uh, definitely worse than the mid-range. I think this is a noticeable height difference every time. So what is it about this plastic that's different? They don't like to tell us, that's, sure, that's all proprietary, I'm sure. Now, when I did the short of freezing the golf ball, there were a lot of people in the comments who wanted to see what would happen if you actually hit the ball with a club. I'm no great golfer, but that actually sounds really fun, so we're gonna test it out. Don't want this to have any time to warm up. Here it goes. I think I took a chunk off of it. I saw a piece fly off. Well, it wasn't a great hit, but I got a piece of it and a piece of it came off. Let's try again. It was a worse hit, but I took more out of it. Well, we were getting ready for another shot and then we heard a popping sound. And this ball cracked itself in half without any help from being hit or being bumped. It was just sitting in there pretty calmly. I don't think being frozen is good for golf balls. Oh, I've got such a good swing. There it is. It, uh, exploded a little bit. I think I see where the biggest piece went. Very cold. Half a golf ball, more or less. Well, the cheap balls really don't like being hit when they're frozen. Let's see if the mid-grade handle it any better. That stayed pretty well intact from what I could see. One there, one there, one up on the hill. They're all damaged. Two of them are like noticeably damaged. Like you would not want to keep playing with these. That's so cold. But none of them broke apart as catastrophically as the cheap ones did. I do think that's pretty interesting. Find out if the really good ones are better. That was my best drive of the day so far. That's cool. I did see a little piece of plastic go flying off of it right at first. Piece of that went backward. I didn't see any pieces come off of that. Hitting frozen golf balls. I'm very out of breath. One of them seems to have stayed intact just fine. Two of them chipped off pretty good. Interestingly, this one was the last one I hit, so it would have been the most frozen, although I think all of them were frozen all the way through. Well, freezing golf balls makes it so they kind of split. I actually had some decently good drives, better than I thought, but I also thought I'd test if I'm seeing what happens when they're really cold, what about when they're really hot? So I'm gonna boil some golf balls for a few minutes, then I'm gonna try and hit them, see what happens. I hope they don't explode in the container. Start with a cheapo. It feels squishier. It's, it's noticeably squishier. <laughs> Squishy golf ball. So soft, and yet it drove really nicely. Now we're moving on to the nice Titleists. They're not terribly conductive, which is nice for touching them. That go up onto the path? It bounced that way toward the path. I'm not sure if it went onto it. That's gonna be annoying to find. Wicked curve on that. See if I can find any of those. All right, well, the boiled Titleist Pro V1, like the really good ball, it made it out to here, which is like easily my longest drive of the day. And frankly, I thought the other two cheap ones that I found were also really good drives. So I, I like boiled golf balls. Is that allowed? I feel like they'd frown on that in a tournament. There's something that we've noticed during these tests and now we want to really like put an emphasis on it. That's the sound. We're hearing something different with every golf ball we hit. So we're going to do one more test, a regular golf ball, 
a boiled golf ball and a frozen golf ball with the mic put really near it so we can hear what that actually sounds like. Dang it. That's the sound I was looking for. I didn't pay attention to where it went. Oh, fully halved it. Well, uh, that cracked right in half. Just blew apart. Frozen golf balls, really not good for hitting. Boiled golf balls, surprisingly good for hitting. Who knew? Anything else you want to see me try with these? Let me know. <laughs> As always, a huge thank you shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon. We could not do these videos without you. If you're interested in joining the Patreon supporters, the link for that is in the description.